do you want to tell us like which notes which jumping between which positions are easy and which positions are hard and like which notes are uh, more doable and which notes are not so doable okay. yeah sure yeah basically yeah. lips yeah yeah so well basically in terms of uh slide positions on the trombone obviously um so you know you have seven positions so first position will be like you know all the way in like this second position is here third position is here fourth position is here fifth position is here sixth position is here and then seventh position is basically all, all the out, almost all the way out yeah Okay. So, um, and, and in terms of ease, you know, it, it, it's more difficult to go from first to sixth. Like, you know, if you have a note that you have to go all the way out to sixth chord right after, if you're playing really fast, that can be more difficult. Um, however, you know, if you, work, if you work at it, it's obviously very attainable, um, you know. So um, I wouldn't let slide position coordination be any sort of a consideration to you necessarily. Um, and limiting you um, on your ideas compositionally. Um, you know, I think it, it's good to sort of stretch, you know, stretch uh, trombone technique. So, um, you know. <laughs> Regarding the, is it easier to j stay in the same position and and um, lips, lip, do lips with harmonics or, or, sure. or is it easier to stay in the same harmonics and change the position? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's two different techniques. I mean, obviously, like, if you're going through harmon harmonics in one position, um, you know, it's just simply um, all a, a lip slur, basically, you know. So, you know, just like that. So, lip slur going between different notes. Um, well, that's very but, agile, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's covering, you know, sort of just kind of glissing through the harmonics, basically. But, you know, changing notes all in the same part, like on, in the first position, like that. I mean, you can still move around pretty quickly. Well, how many, how many positions? There was one, two, three or something? Like... Yeah, I basically was going, I was going... One, two, three, four, five, six, kind of basically. I was basically going through all six positions, but in rapid succession like that. So, yeah, in, yeah. So essentially, essentially but, with trombone and, and, and composing for, I mean, trombone players take music from other instruments all the time. We, we often will play music from, you know, that's been written for the cello. Um, we'll play uh, music that's written for the, the bassoon. Um, we steal the, the Mozart bassoon concerto actually and play it, you know, very frequently. So Wow, I'm um, very impressed by the that that you could find the harmonics. You you could you could quickly find the note um as you are changing the I mean even when you change the position, you could quickly find the note. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh if what about uh from a lower harmonic to a like let's say position one uh, low high harmonics to position two high harmonics, like is that very hard? Um, it, that that means changing changing your slide and at the same time changing a harmonic. Right. Well, not necessarily. I mean, if you went from like say a low B flat. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you can you can keep. It's basically, I mean, yeah, you can you can kind of, you know, go. The sky's the limit, really. I mean, if you if you work at it, you know, you can pretty much cover anything that you could write for uh, any other. Instrument. But you have to hear it, right? You have to hear it. Like you you have to know how it sounds like to. You have to hear it in your head when you before yes. you play it. Yeah, I see. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Is it true that the same note can be played in two different positions? No, right? Every it's no, it's it's totally possible. In fact, um, there are certain notes that that's very uh, common for trombone players to do. Um, for instance, well, uh, of course the now when you were talking about the the F attachment, that allows you obviously to do some notes in you know so yeah you know, C. 
out here in sixth position, and then C, you can actually engage the trigger on the F attachment and place C in first position. Same, same thing with uh, the F. And then, but, okay, so outside of that, other notes that you can do that. For instance, the F, the F in the bass clef staff. Um, the E in, in the bass clef staff. Yeah, and so on. So I mean, there, there's there's a there's a variety of notes. Basically, if you were to break down all of the partials and you sort of could map them oh, out on a grid, I see. Then you would see how the, they would see. overlap. You know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That is so cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, and it's actually a really nice feature when you're playing like stuff that's really fast. It allows the trombone player to use different supply combinations to be able to play really fast passages, you know, that uh, maybe you wouldn't normally be able to play like if you played it in the natural, they call it the natural slide position. If you play it in an alternate slide position, then it allows you to be able to, you know, yeah. play the different notes. There's actually a trombone concerto uh, written by a guy that's, uh, his name is Derek Bourgeois. And um, he, uh, the last movement is really pretty fast. I mean, it's really quite fast. And it starts out. I mean, and you have to use alternate positions, but you play pretty fast, <laughs> you know? And the whole, and it just like goes the whole time. I mean, it just, you just keep on going like that, you know? <laughs> well, so it's, it's possible to play pretty fast on the trombone, you know, and um, pretty much cover any notes that, uh, you know, any other instrument can play, basically. Unless you're, unless you're making some insane, I don't know, first to seven position slides, right? Uh, that can be really hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. But like, like I say, you know, if if there, there's, you know, there, there, there sometimes there's... Usually, there's usually some sort of alternate supply combination that you can use without having to go all, you know, you can actually figure out the alternate position and, you know, make things happen, you know, usually. So, I, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider that too much, much of a limitation for the trombone. So could you play for me? Uh, apparently, there's like different register has di different registers have different tone colors. Uh, apparently, from E to G, and then E to G is a different color from A. The lowest E to G is different from the A to uh, like the rest of the bass clef. I see. And then yeah, yeah is is that could I don't yeah, know. If, yeah. So like, if you were to go from the E, which is you know. <laughs> That's, but on the on this instrument, I can actually go even lower, and it offers more color um, options. So that's an F. That's an F all the way below the E that I played for you uh, the first time. Oh, that. Early on, the E was the it was that the seventh position. Yes. Okay. The e, that first one was the seventh position E. That's like at un, underneath, just underneath the bass clef. Yeah. But then I just played an uh, almost an octave below that, down to the F below that. I see. Wow. Uh, wow. So I mean that's. Sort of that's starting to stretch the limits of the low re low range for a tenor, but but it is possible to get down there and and sound decent down there. So, okay, you wouldn't want to do a ton of composing for the instrument in that range, but if you were looking for maybe some color, you know, and stuff, it's possible to do it. Like very low. Uh, am I right to say that 
uh, at the lowest register, it's not very agile. It's not as agile like uh, uh, switching between notes. Like you would recommend like long long notes or like long. Yes. Yeah. I would. I mean, I would. I would say be careful of like having to sustain notes too long at that in that re register. It's also it's um, very tiring, right? It's yeah. Well, mostly from an oxygen standpoint, like just breathing. <laughs> That's about as long as I can stay in it. <laughs> okay. <you know>. Okay. <laughs> in that in that register, yeah. That that's the wait. That's the lowest F. Yeah, that's the that's the lowest F that I can that I can play, which is that's that's the F below the E that was in seventh position that you asked asked first. Okay. The the other F that's actually just below the bass plus staff is octave higher. That's a much more. I mean, that's very friendly register. Not not too bad at all. You know, that's very friendly low register. <laughs> but that's an octave higher, right? That's an octave higher from that. Yeah, that's okay. an octave higher. And then the so in that yeah. range, yeah, in that range, how long? R roughly, how long can you last in one breath? Do you? Okay. Um, well that's very yeah. long okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's, and you know it depends on how loud you're playing i mean if you're playing really loud of course you're gonna you know yeah um regarding dynamics uh i mean i understand that you can produce like triple p and triple f do right. you recommend certain register is it true for all notes or is it tr is it true that certain register it's easier to do pianissimo yeah. Uh, yeah yeah i would have to say yeah i mean that, that low register if you're playing legato you know musical like singing lyrical type playing in the low register it's easier to you know it's you know easier to be um uh, you know, pretty, um, I would say mezzo forte kind of range, you know, somewhere in there, um, to, you know, like piano to forte, basically. Um, if you start getting real loud down in that register, I mean, it, then it's going to be a little more tiring. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know, I'm looking for the words here, I guess, uh, it might, it might sound a little more frantic maybe. Um, in that in that range than it would you know lyrical if you're playing really loud down there you know okay um, yeah and then the upper range um, I mean again the goal the goal of a trombone player really is to try to do what whatever the composer wants so obviously you know if somebody writes something really soft in the upper register we're gonna we're gonna you know really work okay. work until we can do it you know like for instance the Schumann Ren the Rhenish uh, symphony has a trombone part that goes up to a high E flat, and it's written with like double P or something like that. It's really <laughs> written soft. Basically, it's supposed to be like you know as soft as you can play it. You know, so I mean we work really hard to try to make that happen, even though it's not the easiest thing to do. Okay. But, but professionally, you do it, and you you know you figure out how to make it sound good. <laughs> but yeah, so. Could you uh could you just demonstrate like a pianissimo in the high register and a pianissimo in a low register? Yeah. Okay. What about a uh, low register? So like a soft. I mean, e? uh, maybe you can try both the both that E and that. Okay. Okay. How about that? That's the C below that that E, the, the first E. Wow. The I, I feel it's like totally different instrument. <laughs> the yeah. the high and the low register. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Color-wise, yeah, you're right. I think uh, in terms of you know tone color, you're right. It really, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of variety. Could you do a, a crescendo? Yeah, just a from the softest to the loudest. Um, maybe sure. the middle register, a uh, high middle and low register. Just a short one. Doesn't have to. Yeah, as 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 soft as you can to as loud as you can. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a high B flat. Um, I mean, you, I can play higher than that, obviously, but that's you know in the high range. And then the middle range. Could you could you do that again? Sorry, just do that again. Yeah, I mean, the, when the sound comes to my speakers, maybe I can't. I can't really hear the dynamic as loud. Uh, like the difference. But, the yeah, but I I hear that the the quality actually changes when you the quality the quality actually changes. It becomes more brassy when it's yes. loud. Yeah. Yeah. It can when you're playing on the furthest extreme of loud. It can actually sound almost brittle. Um, sort of a br like have a brittle quality. Um, the, the, the goal, obviously, is to try to play, you know, loud passages, you know, most of the time, unless a composer really wants that brittle character. Some, sometimes that, that might be the case, but um, generally speaking, like in most orchestral rep, we'll try to play, get the real loud, you know, you know playing, but have it not sound like it's about to break or anything like that. You know, you want it to sound big and full, but not like on the edge of like, breaking up you know i see i see yeah uh so what is the what would be your most comfortable high high note well the, yeah probably the b flat that high note that i played that's like a, the, the, that b flat middle of the travel middle of travel clef right uh no that's uh actually um an octave above that b flat so we're the, we're the, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. you guys read tenor clef, so the, the B flat above the middle C, right? Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Exactly. That, that one, um, that one's like probably one of the most comfortable, but then I can play, oh my, that's the B flat there. That's, go, I'm going up by step now at this point. So that F is like, for me, that's like probably I yep. can I can go higher, but then it starts sounding funny, you know. Okay. I mean, I can go to the high B flat, you know, the double high B flat, but that's like, you know, it's that that might be, you know, some, sometimes jazz players will throw something like that in, you know, okay, just to show off that they can do it, you know. So actually, but, you could do you could do from that B flat to the if it's prepared, you you could slowly go up, uh, to. Yeah. B flat above the high B flat that I was talking about. So the B flat that's in in the treble clef range, yeah. that's uh, an octave above that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't that would be again you would only use that in in the in the extreme case of wanting some sort of a color like that. It wouldn't be something that you could yeah I know like kind of lyrical uh, you know beautiful thing. Maybe like yeah maybe a cadenza. Uh, maybe like a cadenza, I'll I'll stretch from that B flat, slowly yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like is all the notes possible? Like yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Pedal register for me is going to be pretty limited. I wouldn't be able to go down to the low 
that real low end on flutter tonguing, but starting at that low E or F that you were talking about, the seventh position note. Yeah. I mean that I could I could flutter tongue down there and then um, that's the B flat, the high, the the high B flat in the treble clef range. So yeah, pretty much pretty much all register. Okay. Okay. Very common mistakes composers make is uh, glissando. Uh, basically, basically just make sure we only slide from position one to position seven, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, that's a good point. As in, yeah, you just yeah. want have to make sure your hum the note matches the same harmonics, right? Down the. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you pretty much can go one to seven, seven to one. Um, um, for example, the B flat above the bass clef, uh -huh. right above the bass clef, you you from position one you can glist to the E, you can glist to the E at position seven, right? Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that's correct. So I just have to follow that line. Yeah. 